to Wasatch Weekends for this October 1st Sunday edition. I'm your host, Ben Roof. On today's show, we're talking to local fitness influencer and the founder of a new web app called Web Wells. And we're also going to be speaking to the journalist behind the new docu-series, Escaping the Twin Flames. But first, a quick local announcement. Today is the day for the Park City Library Costume Swap, which is a fantastic opportunity for you to trade in your gently used kids or adult costumes and swap them out for a new-to-you version for your Halloween or any other costume needs. One of the great things about the Park City Swaps is the library helps to foster sustainability in the community by helping get items out of landfills and back into general circulation, helping people extend the lives of their items and find things that might be better fits for them than their previous tools. If you need to find out more about how you can help sustainability in the Park City community, make sure to check out the Library Sustainability Center or check out the parkcitylibrary.org. But now, let's take a quick look at the weather before we get on with the show. This weather report is brought to you by Sun and Ski Sports, your new mountain sports headquarters. Welcome back to the show. Melanie Webb is a local fitness influencer and writer who has founded a new company and app called WebWell Pro. And I had the opportunity to speak with her a little bit earlier this week about how her app is going to help us take advantage of the outdoors in our fitness journey. Let's take a look. Welcome back to the show. We are now joined by Melanie Webb, an author and fitness expert and expert in the travel space who's just releasing her new fitness coaching app, WebWell. Melanie, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on, Ben. Well, thank you so much for joining us. So tell us a little bit about your background with fitness and helping people really take their fitness journey to the outdoors. Oh, I love that question. We were just talking about this. So I grew up in Utah. I was a big outdoors girl and also an athlete. And eventually my career landed me in Washington, DC, where first I worked as an environmental consultant and then I transitioned back to my true love of working with fitness as a personal trainer. And when my clients found out that I was from Utah and close to Park City and that I had been a wildlife biologist here in Southern Utah, they started hiring me to lead them on their bucket list adventures so I would train them in the gym, get them ready, help them buy all their gear, we'd test it out, and then we would come back to Utah and take these amazing fitness adventures. So that's what led me into getting people outside and I started seeing just magic happen when they were outdoors compared to when they were in the gym. They were like totally different people. So how does that really change people's interaction with their own fitness, going from kind of a closed indoor space to getting out in the outdoors? Because I know like a lot of people, when they really think about exercise, they are imagining a spin class or a yoga class or a weight room. So how does like getting outside really make things different? I imagine you're not like bringing a squat rack with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not bringing a squat rack with me. I'm not bringing any tools or equipment. I'm just using what I call mother nature's gym. And in my opinion, um, you know, we can do so much indoors, but fitness instructors, we trainers, we're dealing with half of a toolkit when it comes to human health and especially human physiology. Humans evolved to be in nature. We evolved to have our feet in the ground, our eyes open, looking out. There's all kinds of magic, is what I call it, that happens in the human brain when we are outside. And now the science, there's so much evidence that has researched and proven what's happening out there. And 
all kinds of things like dopamine receptors. Um, being outdoors in a green environment can help offset symptoms of anxiety and depression. I would submit that anxiety gets a little bit heightened for a lot of people in the gym and in the studio. Some, some gyms are really noisy. There's TVs everywhere. Machines are loud. There's, you know, machines clanging. I spend a lot of time in the gym. I've been lifting weights since I was 14 years old. Um, I've been a personal trainer for 25 years. So I'm in no way advocating that people give up the gym, but I think we need to reclaim our relationship with the outdoors and reconnect with it and remember that we're part of it and that what happens outdoors is a part of us. It's, it's not just, um, we can't just hide out indoors anymore. We're not better for it. We are sicker for it. Well, and it's my understanding, and I'm sure you know better than I would, that a little bit of as important as routine is in your fitness practice, it's important to kind of not get stuck doing the same things over and over because you end up plateauing and you end up getting kind of fixed into one mode and not seeing the progress you need. And I would imagine that breaking things up and getting outside and really kind of changing the way that we're approaching things, even if it is just for a limited time, can really kind of help break through some of those hurdles or plateaus that people might be experiencing. Has that been your experience? That has been my experience. And what I found was people had these dreams of accomplishing something outside and that training indoors, they could often, like you said, everybody plateaus at some point. And you have to work hard to get yourself off of that plateau. And as a result, if you don't do that, if you don't continually progress and challenge yourself, you could get bored. Um, you could drop away. And at that point, your fitness levels start to drop. Your muscle development starts to drop. Your bones start to get weaker. So for my clients, what I saw is that they dreamed of doing these things that were a little bit scary to them also because it wasn't their lifestyle. And even now that I live back in Utah, People are a little bit curious about the outdoors and not everyone has a safe partner to lead them out there and to teach them how to interact there. So um, to use the gym to train for something bigger, it adds the spice of life and the adventure back into the experience. Well, that's something that I've found myself in my own experience. Just if I'm, you know, going to the gym and tracking my progress on a spreadsheet or something like that, you know, just watching that number change a little bit week to week mm -hmm. can be somewhat motivating, but I find it's not nearly as good as like when I'm able to just hike more easily or when I'm able to get out of my bike and the bike ride just goes a little bit smoother and all of those outdoor activities that we participate so much in here out in the West, all of that can be just so heavily impacted by just the littlest changes in your fitness level. And it's my understanding that your WebWell app can go a really long way into kind of helping us break through those sedentary routines. Sedentary is not necessarily the right word, but those routines where we're constantly going back to the same locations and really kind of helping to get us out and get that fitness experience more outdoors. So how exactly does the WebWell app help us with that? That's the objective exactly, is to train you to mix up your routine a little bit so that you're continually growing. Everything on the app is evidence-based, meaning that myself and all of the other trainers and coaches who have submitted content, we are in the trenches. We are working with clients. We're not just choreographing ideas in our head about what kind of exercises work, but we've literally trained people to go out and do these things that we love to do, hiking, biking, skiing, camping, walking, you know, stand up paddling, whatever. Like you said, we have such a lifestyle of activity in the West, but you want to think also about protecting the investment of being out there doing these things. We all know what happens when we get injured and have to miss an entire season of one of our favorite sports, um, right? You don't want to let that happen. You want to be well-rounded. Uh, you want to approach mobility, which is range of motion around a joint flexibility and build strength in those muscles as well as cardio. So I, I feel that we've created something really well-rounded. Um, we've tested this on our own clients again and again, and we've seen it work. So I would imagine that since the focus is kind of getting out of the gym environment a little bit, there's not a whole lot of equipment that we would need to have to participate fully in the web -well program. That's a great question. And, you know, I started creating this in the peak of COVID. So a lot of the content was me just going outside with my mat, 
maybe a couple of small dumbbells, some tubing. There's a lot of body weight activity on the app. Um, so no, you don't, it doesn't require a lot there. I anticipate getting to a squat rack eventually, but I haven't, I haven't created a whole lot indoors yet, but there is some. Awesome. So it's yoga, a little bit of weight exercises, some body weight, a little bit of like injury prevention, that sort of thing as well. There's a lot of injury prevention and, um, there's a little bit, uh, there's also not only prevention, but if you want to say treatment and maintenance. So for, I'm um, using myself as, you know, the, the active outdoorsy Western girl who's been banged up a lot. So I have a shoulder that's injured. I have had several concussions. So there's activities you can do that progress your healing also. Of course, you want to, you know, check in with your doctor or your physical therapist if you've had those experiences. But um, I would say um, yoga, there's a little bit of yoga because that's not my, that's not really my jam. I do, I do uh, practice yoga in my yoga retreats. But primarily the app is more strength based and um, mobility based. There's uh, what I call the movement studio is where there's all the movements, work, full workouts, warm ups, cool downs, exercise tutorials. And then the relaxation room is my other love, which is mindfulness activities. So breath work, guided visualizations and meditations. Webwell's three pillars of health are body, mind and nature. So there's a, a flavor of nature that runs throughout and then all of the emphasis is on the body and the mind. Fantastic. Melanie, where can we go to either download the app or check out more information about it if we're still a little bit curious? You can download the app in the Apple Store. It's available for iPhone and iPad at this time. Hopefully we'll get it in Android by the end of the year and you can learn more at webwell.com. Awesome. Well, Melanie Webb, thank you so much for joining us and creating such a wonderful project, program to help <laughs> us get more outdoors and more in tune with ourselves and with nature. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you, Ben. Awesome. Well, you have a great rest of your day, and we will be back with a little bit more after a short break. Welcome back to Wasatch Weekends. One of the big challenges that the world and the changing technologies facing us now is dating on the internet. And sometimes when we're looking for help dating online, we cannot find the good help that we think we're finding. And Gretchen Pleshaw had the opportunity to speak to the journalists behind Desperately Seeking Soulmates, Escaping the Universe of the Twin Flame, a new docu-series that takes a look at how looking for help in online dating might lead us down some less than positive paths. Let's take a look. I am so excited to introduce you to Alice Hines, a journalist, and it's an on, well, it's a docu-series about an online called All About Twin Flames. And I am very stoked about this, Alice, because I have read a lot in my short life about Twin Flames, so I can't wait to speak to you and hear all about this docu-series. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. That's a that's so funny that you have read about Twin Flame. Right. Yeah, that is something. Yeah, it's something that like some people know about, but right. then like I feel like most people have never heard of. So I was so excited because um, when I got this whole um, moment to get to speak to you and heard all about what we were going to be talking about this new docu series, and it sounds very dark, we'll say. It was interesting to me because I've read all these books about Twin Flames being the other human created for you out of a flame, correct? And how usually they teach you um, kind of the trials and tribulations, but oftentimes you don't end up with your twin flame. And then this docu-series has a twist and it sounds a little dark, Alice. What is it all about? <laughs> yeah, so a twin flame is a spiritual concept that is basically like your ultimate lover. So right. this is someone that supposedly you're created for and you're two halves of the same soul. So a lot of people are obviously drawn to that because it's a way to kind of find meaning and spirituality and love. Right. And so it's a concept that's becoming more popular, but the group that our docu-series is about, a lot of people actually think it's a cult. And they kind of use this twin flame idea to manipulate people and, you know, they've ruined some lives. Oh, I love how you said that too. They ruined some lives, no big deal. <laughs> that I is... mean, no, seriously, if you guys watch, it's, it's, <laughs> I'll just say that. You yeah. know, I'm excited because I think with me, I tend to kind of go towards the more fluffy, 
um, mellow pieces and I get like the more exciting like love romance and this seems deep and dark and I'm here for it. Can you kind of like give us a, run, a rundown of the characters and exactly the online dating thing, the whole thing. I want to hear all about it. Yeah, sure. So the group is run by a pair of spiritual healers and leaders named Jeff and Shalia. They're a married couple and they live in Michigan and they run the spiritual group online. So a lot of people find them through their YouTube videos, which are basically like how to find your twin flame. Like, is the separation I'm experiencing from the person I'm in love with like to do with the fact that they are my twin flame, right? Like this is what draws people to their content. But then once they get more involved, they're asked to pay a lot of money. Like, many thousands of dollars for this these online courses you know they say that in order to find your twin flame you need to do this therapy right. and the therapy ends up being really abusive because people are talking about their traumas and a lot of times they use that against them when they try to leave the group so it and, is, you know another yeah oh, go ahead yeah, yeah yeah no keep on going i'm so intrigued keep going <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, another thing they do is, you know, they they'll say that they can confirm who your twin flame is. So these people actually say that they're the master Christ and that they have a direct conduit to God. And that, you know, if you come to them and if you pay them, they'll confirm whether, you know, this person that you're interested in is your twin flame. Right. Or not. And wow. so people are really obviously intrigued by that. And uh, haven't we all wanted to know, like, is this the person I'm supposed to be with? I mean, it's a really relatable place to be in and unfortunately you know they take advantage of people who are unlucky in love alice this is so interesting because yes i truthfully i have tarot card readers i have psychics i do all of this and it's interesting because i think you're right all of us dive into this idea this concept of we do want to know who our other half is who that human is we're meant to you know our ride or die and be with but that's interesting that it takes a dark turn how did how did you think of all this well, I started researching the organization because I'm, I've been a journalist for more than 10 years and okay. I'm really interested in kind of fringe online communities. So, cool. you know, I've written about like incels and voluntary celibates. I've written about, um, actually, I got, uh, I was catfished one time on a dating app. I've written about that. So I'm very interested in the ways that love and intimacy are kind of evolving in the digital era. Right. And so this spiritual group Twin Flames Universe is a real example of that because they actually, you know, they they are, a lot of people think it's a cult, but they're only operating online, right? Like most right. people really connect with them through the internet. And these are people who are also trying to find love on the internet. And so for me, this was just a really relatable and yeah. kind of current topic that even though, okay, like most of us haven't, you know, joined a cult and, you know, <laughs> uh, we can relate to the reasons why people would be interested in these ideas. A hundred percent. And I love that you take the concept because you're right. This is the way that we date now. And this is the new world, quote unquote. And it's cool because I've been catfished before as well. And I think now we're like, oh, it's not that big. It's weird and it's scary and it is dark. So I love that you take this real relatable moment and you make this like dark cool i'm excited where can i watch this where do i go <laughs> yeah so the documentary is called desperately seeking soulmate Soul. escaping twin flames universe okay. and you can watch it october 6th on prime video oh my gosh i am so excited well alice thank you so much i can't wait to watch it and see what it's all about and uh i can't wait to like hopefully we can do another talk and catch up with you and see how you felt it went over <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm really excited for, excited for you to watch it, Gretchen. Thanks I, know, so much I think for I'll get, you know, you and I need to get back on the couch and talk about this because I'm stoked. I can't wait to watch it. Thank you so much, yeah. Alice. I really appreciate you. Yeah, thanks so much. Have a great one. <laughs>
so much for tuning in to our Sunday, October 1st edition of Wasatch Weekends. Don't forget to catch us tomorrow where we've got some fantastic advice about life insurance and our general health. Until then, this is Wasatch Weekends. I'm Ben Roof, and I will see you tomorrow.